Hey, good morning, girls. Happy Thursday. I believe we're on Thursday. Is that where we're at here? Where are we at? 12? You know, I believe it's Friday, isn't it? Hang on a sec. Oh, lordy. It's Friday. Okay, good morning. So glad you guys are out today. Yes, I'm inside again. It looks like I'm going to be inside doing morning minutes for a little while. Um... <clears throat> Mainly from the standpoint, uh, it's below freezing outside. Um, we're not even due to hit, I think, 40 degrees today here. So, you know, it's it's annoying almost. It's like you get this freezing weather, this cold weather, and then there's no moisture, so we don't even get snow. I mean, seriously, if you're going to be this cold, let's have some snow. You know what I mean? Um, not that I want to shovel it or drive in it, but it sure would be pretty to look out the office window and and see just white snow on the trees because it'd be beautiful on the pine trees. So good morning. Today's topic, you know, I was sitting there today <clears throat> and thinking, and, you know, we've been going through a lot of different um, steps, things in our lives as we thrive as women of God. But one of them that I think is really important for you to thrive is going to be hearing from God. And some people are like, well, I've never heard from God. How do you hear from God? I don't get it. What am I missing? And so today I want to talk to you a little bit about how to hear from God and, you know, maybe even why you're not. So, but that, why you're not hearing from God is actually between you and Him. I can't tell you where you're at in your walk. I can't tell you where you're at in your life. That's between you and God, okay? All I can do is share with you information to help you so that you can move into that place with God, okay? So today we're going to start off, and we'll be talking a little bit about Samuel today, because I think Samuel's a beautiful example of someone that was an average person, just like you and I, and yet they heard from God, and you know the story of Samuel. You know how powerful he was and how God used him mightily in what he wanted him to do. So let's take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verses 10 and 11. And excuse me, I'm going to be reading off the, <coughs> excuse me, off the computer monitor for, um, I use blueletterbible.org. Because uh, it's a great resource to go to when you're looking at different versions of the Bible. Or maybe um, what a word means. Because you do some word study in there as well. I have, and actually it's not on the back desk anymore. We put it up. When I was unpacking the office, I found... Um, I can't believe I used to carry this thing around. My Strong's Concordance. And if you don't have one, they're about that big and about that thick. And I think they weigh probably five pounds. Um, but I have my strong concordance as a hard copy, my vine dictionary, and one other thing. Um, but what's nice is blueletterbible.org will actually give you all of those tools in a digital form. Um, the only reason I'm keeping them is because I, you know, there's going to be a day and a time when we're not going to have access to this stuff. You know, um, it's going to disappear. So we need to keep our print stuff. While the digital stuff is great, keep hold of your print stuff. If you've got a concordance, if you've got a Vine dictionary, you know, obviously your Bibles, you know, I have a digital Bible, but I also have hard, you know, one tangible that you hold. Uh, keep a hold of that stuff, because you may need it down the road. Okay, so 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. So excuse me if I'm not looking at you. I'm going to be reading from the, the screen here. It says in there, the Lord came and stood there, calling as... At the other, Colin is at the other times. Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak for your servant, servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. And, and there's a reason I'm doing 10 and 11. Verse 10 talks about God calling Samuel. Okay? Verse 11 talks about how amazing it is when we actually hear God calling and we hear what God's saying. 
that we see, our eyes are open, we're not blind to a lot of stuff anymore as we're receiving. <clears throat> so let's take a look at that. So we wonder, we hear people say, God spoke to me. I tell you that, I tell you if I've seen a vision of something, I can close my eyes and see the women's conference played out. I hear God tangibly, and, and I do hear his voice respond in some cases. Now, Greg used to laugh at me because we'd be sitting there looking at, you know, he was looking to buy a truck. And if you know Greg, you know he's got truck issues. So he was buying this truck, and he wanted it so bad that he was willing to compromise parameters that we already set up. When we agreed on, this is how we were going to do this. And so he gets to the dealer, and he goes alone because I had no tolerance for him. I'm not patient with them. I know they play games with you, and they toy with you, and they annoy you, and I don't want to play because I'm, I just say, you know, enough. Here's what we're doing. If you don't like it, we'll walk. It doesn't matter. I don't need your truck. Okay, so Greg went after work one day because he just was like, okay, we already found the truck. We know what we're doing. I'm going to go and try to make the deal. And I said, all right, you go. So he calls me from the dealership and he says, hey, they've got the truck. They're willing to do this, but not that. Okay, and the this was probably $50 more a month. And at that point, I just got quiet. And Greg says, what are you doing? I said, I'm waiting to hear from God. Because I don't think this is what we're supposed to be doing. My discernment is saying no. Uh, so he's sitting there and he's, he's giving me the reasons. Okay, girls, you know how our husbands do that. Here's the reasons to justify why he had to spend whatever amount it was on that truck. Um, and all of a sudden, I hear this voice of God just say no. And I thought, okay, there's nobody in the house with me, so what's the deal? Okay, because it still kind of shocks me when you actually hear it audibly. It's like, whoa, you know, why don't you just come down and sit down and talk with me in person? I'd be, life would be so much easier, right? So I tell Greg, God said no. And then God said, not now. And I told Greg, not now. And he's like, well, why are you saying that? I said, because God said no. And he said, all right, I'm on my way home. So he came home, <clears throat> fit as a hornet, mad as a hornet. You thought I would have stirred up his nest, and he didn't talk to anybody. He ignored the dogs. He wouldn't talk to me. He pouted all night. This was a Saturday. So Sunday we go to church, and this dealer is calling him three different times during service, and we're ignoring it, right? It's just vibrating on his phone, and we're ignoring it. We're like, we're not answering that. We're in church. We're not picking up the phone. And so when we get out, we were going to lunch with some friends, and then he was going to go and take a look at a different dealership to see if they might have a better deal. And the message was the sales manager calling back saying, we really want to talk to you about this truck. And so I called him back. Oh, girls, these dealers don't want Robin on the phone. They don't want Robin in the showroom either. See, because when I told Greg no, because God told us no, that salesperson on the other end didn't realize I was on Bluetooth with him. And that salesperson tells Greg, don't worry about what your wife thinks. She's not here, and you can just, you know, put her in line when you get home. But I heard that. <clears throat> didn't know I was on Bluetooth. And he told the sales guy, he says, um, my wife just heard that, and the guy shut up real quick. So anyhow, they called him, and, and so I called him back, and I just said, you know, thanks for the call. We're glad you're, you know, wanting to work a better deal with us, but we're on our way to lunch with some friends, and then we're going to another dealer, because I'm about being honest with folks. I'm not playing games. We're going to another dealer to look. They've got the same truck, so we'll let you know. And the guy says, well, I'll be here till 3. Come on by. <clears throat> and all I told Greg was, is I said, just sit tight. These guys want to sell that truck to you. God said no, because he knew there was a better prize for you. He knew there was something better. And lo and behold, 
By the time it was all said and done, we ended up heading off to that dealer. They actually came down below the price we wanted. No money down. Everything was exact. Extended warranty and everything. And that same salesperson that basically told my husband to disrespect his wife is the one that had to deal with me when we went in to pick up the truck. You see, girls, sometimes God speaks in a little way like that. But there's been times that God has spoke when we talk about ministry. God very clearly called me to do something. And I try to respond the best I can. <clears throat> God has given a vision. And, and how does this vision, how does this vision, how do these, how do you hear God? How do you know what's God speaking? I know all those questions are going through your head. And there's many times many ways that God can speak to us. And I wrote down a couple here. And part of it is we have to be ready to hear. Okay, we have to be wanting to hear from God. See, if we're not in a place of where God can speak to us, maturity level, or maybe in our own life, you know, potentially there's a, a heart attitude that needs to change in you. You know, you're asking God to respond to a blessing of some kind or, or something, and you're just not in the right place to hear from him. Maybe your heart is filled with worry. Maybe you're just too busy to slow down to listen. See, this all comes back to our original concept when we started doing Morning Minutes months ago, where we talked about finding that first time carving that first moment of the day with Jesus. You see, if we're so busy with our life and our own agendas, girls, we can't hear from God because there's so much clutter going on that he has no room to fit in and speak to you. And you see, God is not going to bully his way into your life. God is a gentleman. He is sitting there saying, Robin, do you want to hear from me today? Then you need to slow down and spend time with me. Are you slowing down to spend time with God? Is your heart right? How do you get your heart right? Your heart gets right through prayer, praise, worship, reading, journaling. Asking God to forgive and cleanse you. Because see, if we're not ready to receive, then we can't receive. It's like if somebody gives you a gift, but you sit there <clears throat> with your arms crossed like this. Okay? You can't receive the gift. See, girls, we have to be ready to receive. What is in your heart? What is it that you need to shift in order for God to start to speak to you? Is there worry in your heart? Is there unforgiveness in your heart? What is going on? Are you just so busy that you're missing those opportunities to hear from him? Are you filling your spare moments each day with anything you can possibly do instead of getting comfortable which is stopping and listening to what God has for you. Girls, we're in a mentality in this world of a microwave mentality of fast moving. You walk around and <clears throat> everybody has to go, 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 right? We are not comfortable at just stopping. We think that from the time we wake up in the morning to the time we go to bed at night, our feet have to be moving. You may have kids. You may have a job. You may have a business. You may be taking care of sick parents or sick family members. But girls, you have to stop. You have to pause. You have to put God in there. He can't be an afterthought. So if you're not hearing from God, where are you putting him in your life? 
What is your heart condition? Is there things you need to surrender to God? Is there worry? Is there fear? Is there unforgiveness? All of these things can stop you from hearing. Do you not find time for God in your life? If God is not a priority, you're most likely not going to hear from him. And we have to go back. And they say, well, I don't have time. Girls, remember the price that was paid for you. God sent his only beloved son to die on the cross for you and I. So that we could have direct access to God. To Abba Father. We get that blessing of salvation. We're shown grace. We're shown mercy. Where is God in your day? Is he an afterthought? And yeah, I said that once already, but I'm going to say it again. It's that important. Are you fitting him in wherever it's convenient? Or is he a priority in your day? And as I say this, I have to examine myself. How much of a priority is God in everything I'm doing right now? Where is God in what I do? Do I make sure he is a focus in the morning? Or am I so busy being, you know, little miss housewife or little miss business owner? What is the priority in your day? You see, because in the story there in 1 Samuel, the Lord calls out to young Samuel twice. But because Samuel doesn't recognize his voice, he's not been in the presence of God. He's not been surrounded. He's young. And as you mature in the Lord, you become more in tune to what God is calling you. And I love what it says in verse 11. <clears throat> As we learn to hear the voice of God, we see more clarity. We see his priorities. We see his hand moving in our lives in ways we may never have seen it before. We see his way out of difficult situations. That is the beauty of the relationship with Christ. It's not a religion, girls. Remember that. This is a relationship. Something, a relationship is something you work on, that you connect with, that you communicate with. Are you hearing from God? Where is God in your day? God still speaks to us as ordinary women living in this world. As women of God who are focused on him. Who love him. He just wants us to focus back. We need to stop the busyness in our lives. <clears throat> and go back to what's, what's important. Think of the story of Martha and Mary. Martha was all about being busy. Yeah, Jesus was in my home. But she was missing out on that that was the best part, which Mary saw, and that was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Are you sitting at the feet of Jesus on a regular basis every day? Is it a priority in your life? Or again, is it an afterthought? I'm too busy. I'm too tired. What is your two that's stopping you from sitting at the feet and hearing from God our Father. How does God speak? So there's several ways that God will speak to us. Excuse me, I'm having some sinus issues today. God speaks through his word. And I've got some scriptures written down here for you. So I'm going to give you the verses. You can go look them up. That's kind of your homework for today, right? 
So God speaks through his word, and that is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. God speaks through his creations. Psalm 65, verse 8. He speaks through the Holy Spirit, which he sent, right? When Jesus was taken, he left the Holy Spirit here to help us, right? So John 14, 26. He uses spiritual leaders and teachers. So somebody that you, your pastor, your women's ministry leader, whoever, your teachers are also going to help with that. That's 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. And through godly counsel, Psalm 37, 30 to 31. That means that you're seeking advice from other godly people, not from the world, not from Google. Okay? Um, that when we, we seek advice, we seek it through the Bible. You see, and that's when somebody asks me a question. Sometimes I get really upset with my answer, but my answer goes back to what does the Bible tell us? That's what I know to be truth. Everything else out there, hogwash. I stand on the word of God being truth. That is my counsel. I try to surround myself with other people of God so that when I'm asking for advice or guidance, that it's from somebody who also follows Jesus Christ. You see, if you seek advice from people who don't have that relationship with Christ, you're not going to be given godly counsel. If you're not following godly counsel, how can you be in the will of God? When we talk about prayer, I just want to talk about that real quick. Prayer is our way of communicating with God. So, Prayer is us coming to God with our needs and with our praise, with our adoration, with our worship, okay? It's not a Santa list. It's not a wish list. It is, God, here's where we're at today. This is what's needed. These are the people that need to be healed. You know, when, when I see a post come up that somebody is, is needing prayer, you lift them up, Father. You see their request. Okay? But prayer also means we stop and listen. How many times do we start praying and get going and we don't shut up during it and all of a sudden we've missed out what God said? See, because if we if we come to God, we praise we request, we ask forgiveness, and then we just get quiet. There are times that in your quiet times with God where you're just quiet, you're listening, you will hear the voice of God speak to you. It could be an audible voice. If you're listening to worship, it could be a worship song that comes on. If you've got the Bible in front of you, it could be a verse that comes up. It could be the Holy Spirit quickening you. God moves in many ways and lives. We're just so busy that we're missing it. My prayer for you girls, that as you're trying to find out how do you hear from God, what does God have for me, my prayer for you is that your hearts will be ready to receive whatever God has for you. You will be expectant to hear. I expect to hear from God. In one way or another. In one source or another. I love when I audibly hear from him. That is such a neat, neat, amazing, awesome experience when you hear the voice of God. Can't even describe the voice. It just is... When it happens, you can't explain it, but it's audible. I can't wait to see the vision for the next steps that he has. You know, we're planning this women's conference for March. And I'm just in awe of, of how he's moving and speaking in this thing. Beyond what I would have anticipated. 
My pastor tells me that we were playing small, and our God plays bigger, and I know that. God plays big. He is bigger than anything that's going on in your life. And he's got such a grand plan for you that he wants to share it with you. But we've got to slow down and stop and listen. May your hearts be ready and expectant to hear from God today. May you find the time, dear sisters, in your day to make God the priority, to worship and praise and focus on him. I pray, girls, that you can start the morning with Jesus. That you can, you can get up five minutes earlier before the kids are up, before you have to get ready for work. Grab a cup of coffee and go sit and listen, girls. Create yourself a beautiful spot in your home where you can just go sit and listen. I've moved mine inside only because we're freezing outside. That comes spring, I'll be back on that back porch. Because it's beautiful. I can surround myself with the nature and God's creation. And just sit quietly and listen to him. No distractions. Are you hearing from God? Do you hear the voice of God? Is he a priority in your life? Or is he an afterthought in your day? I'm going to leave you with that. But I do pray for you today, girls, that your hearts will be ready and your heart will be expected to hear from our Lord and Savior for what your next direction is. Such a beautiful thing. All right, girls, be blessed today. Love you. We'll catch you next week. Bye-bye.